All right, so continuing on, I'll just run this again so we can see what uh, we finished in the last video. So we got the same result as we did with the other commented out code. So basically we got to write less code to accomplish what we wanted to do. And instead of passing an anonymous instance of Arbuck and Cat, we passed a Lambda instead. Now we could have done it in only one line of code if we passed the Lambda expression directly to do string stuff rather than saving it to a variable first. But I just wanted to show you that we can assign Lambdas to variables and use them later. And if you want to use that same lambda in more than one place, we only have to define it once and then we can use it wherever we need it. Now if our lambda contained more than one statement, then we would have to use the return keyword. So let's change the body of our lambda so that it stores the results of the uppercasing and concatenation into a new string variable and then returns it just so we can see what that looks like. So we go back into our lambda on line 51 and we're going to actually uh, we put a, put a code block there, so we're going to put our first code block there, and it's going to be string result is equal to s1 dot uppercase plus s2 dot uppercase, and then we're going to return result. And we'll just oops, put a semicolon there, and a semicolon on the end of that line as well, and everything else is unchanged. So that's how you would execute multiple things in the body of the lambda. So again, just a few things to note here. First of all, I used curly braces, and that's because the body now has more than one statement. For the same reason, we also need the semicolons after each statement in the body. And you may also have noticed that uh, we added the, when we added uh, the curly braces, but before we tacked on the string result equals, IntelliJ complained that we no longer had a statement. But once we add curly braces, the return keyword is required, even if there's only one statement in the body. Just to confirm, we'll run it to make sure we get the same results. We've still got the same result there, so that's good. So we've seen several examples of Lambda expressions. Now instead of using the upper concat Lambda expression within the main method, let's actually create a class that isn't static so that we can uh, take a look at Lambda expression and scope. So we're going to add the new class into the main Java file. So let's just go down to the bottom. And we'll add that uh, down here. And we'll call this class another class, another class. And let's create a method in here. We'll have public void do something. We're going to do a return main dot do string stuff and a new upper concat. Press enter there. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to return s1 dot two uppercase plus s2 dot uppercase or two uppercase I should say and then come down here and that's the second parameter string one string one string two and you just semicolon on the end of that return line and that should be a string there because we're returning a string from this method ultimately all right, so in our main method, we're going to construct an instance of another class and call the do something method and print out the result. So I'll come back to our main class, and what I might do is uh, let's actually delete some of this code. I'll just comment it all out for now, just in case you need to refer to it. All right, so let's call our another class. So another class, another class is equal to new another class. Then a string s equals another class dot do something and print out the result. Pretty basic there. We'll run that. We've got string one and string two concatenated together. And that's because we're calling the uh, do something method that's creating an anonymous class to return s1 dot up to uppercase plus s2 dot to uppercase. Okay, so let's add another line to the upper and uh, concat method in the anonymous class. And what we're going to do, before we return out the string result, we're going to print out the class name of the anonymous class instance. And we'll do the same for the another class instance. So we're going to come down here, and in the do something method, before we do the return, we're going to print out the another class class's name is plus get class dot get simple name. 
So we'll do it there, but also let's also add that to the upper concat and concat method. And it's going to be there the anonymous class's name is plus get class dot get simple name again. Simple name. Okay. So when we run that, we should see that uh, the anonymous class name gets output, but in theory the anonymous sorry, the another class class name gets printed out. And I'll just move this down to the bottom. To the bottom. To see that a bit better. So the another class class name is another class, and the anonymous class's name is nothing, and that's correct because of course the anonymous class doesn't have a name, which makes sense. But let's actually now use a lambda expression instead of an anonymous class. So we're going to close this run window. And let's use this lambda expression. So we're going to do that. So in the do something method, I'm just going to comment this code out. To make it clear, and we're going to do upper concat uc equals our two parameters in brackets arrow token, and then we're going to do printout. And that was a mistake, I'll just undo that because it should have been a code block, not a bracket. So I'll go back to there again, make that a code block, and it's out when our work, and we'll put the lambda expressions class is plus get class dot get simple name and we'll just do string result equals s1 dot two uppercase plus s2 dot two uppercase return result semicolon there and then we do a printout which is going to be now the another class class's name is plus get class dot get simple name then we're going to do return main dot do string stuff string one again string two and I forgot the first parameter our lambda all right so what do you think the name of the lambda expressions class is going to be so let's actually run it and find out. So if we run it, you can see that we've got the Lambda expression's name is set to another class, just like the another class's name. So what is that actually telling us? Well, it's telling us that the Lambda or that a Lambda expression isn't a class. When the code runs and an anonymous instance isn't created, instead the Lambda is treated like a nested block of code and it has the same scope as a nested block. So let's look at a few examples to see this in action, just so hopefully it becomes a bit clearer. So first, so let's look at a nested block that isn't part that isn't part of a lambda. So instead of using a lambda in the do something method, we'll do it the long way by using an anonymous class. We'll also put all the code inside a nested block. So let's go go back and do that. So. So I'm just going to comment that out for now. And so we're just going to add a code block here in the do something method. And we'll put upper concat uc equals new upper concat, creating our code. And we'll do a return s1.2 uppercase plus s2.2 uppercase, a semicolon there. And we'll also put the print, we'll put that in the code block that we've just added. So by putting the code inside a nested block, all we mean is that uh, we've enclosed it with another set of curly braces. As you can see, I've done braces on line 105 and 115. Now code within a nested block can reference variables defined within the enclosing block, meaning the block of code that contains it, which in this case is the do something method body. Now if we were to define a local variable in the enclosing block, we could use it within the nested block. So let's actually do that just to confirm it by adding an int variable called count and initializing it to zero. And then we're going to increment the value inside the nested block and print it out. So we'll come, come up and uh, do that. We'll do that before the uh, final return. So just after the printout here. So what we need to do is just add our variable before the code block, outside of the code block. So it's int i equals zero, initialize it. 
Now within the uh, nested block, we're going to put it in there, I++. plus plus. We'll print out a message, I equals plus I, and we'll leave that return in there that was working as before. So if we run this, it should work without any errors. You can see we've got I equals one, so clearly the increment uh, worked, and we've got our result. So basically the code within the nested block can use the local variable I because nested blocks are in the closing block scope. But what about the anonymous class though? Now we already know that if we want to reference a local variable defined outside the anonymous class, we have to declare the local variable as final. Now if we try and use I inside the upper and concat method, we'll actually get a compiler error. So let's try to print the value of I from within the method just to confirm that that does happen. So I'm talking about this upper and concat method on line 109. So if we try to print something before the return, like um, I, and we'll put within anonymous class equals plus I. So looking at that, uh, IntelliJ is complaining that it needs to be final. So let's add the final in front of the uh, int declaration on line uh, 105, so final. And the other thing we'll have to do is we'll have to change the code or we'll basically comment, comment out the two lines outside the anonymous class that update I because we can't change the value of a final variable once it's been assigned. So if we just come down here, just, from, just that one line anyway, comment that line out to avoid that being an error. So now if we run that, and obviously that's set to zero because it's a final variable and there's no incrementation, no incrementing of the value. But the question here is why do local variables have to be declared as final when we use them within an anonymous class? Well, it's because the local variable doesn't belong to the anonymous class instance. What actually happens under the covers is that the variable is replaced by whatever the value of i is when the instance is constructed. So it's possible we may not use the instance of an anonymous class for a while. We may even pass it to a method in another class and there'd be no way for the Java runtime to update the value within the anonymous class instance every time it changed within the do something method. So in other words, the values would get out of sync. So for that reason, the values of local variables declared outside the scope of the anonymous class are not allowed to change. They have to be declared as final. All right, so let's get back to how this relates to Lambda expressions. So we'll go back to using a lambda in the do something method. And we're going to remove the extra set of curly braces as well. And we'll also remove the final keyword from the local variable declaration. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to remove the final here. I'm going to remove the extra nested, oh, the extra braces, I should say, curly braces. Put the code back space there and we'll put our lambda instead of the uh, other method so we'll just type that in again because it's good practice to become familiar with them upper concat uc equals and start with our parameter list s1 s2 arrow token then curly brace and then the code we want executed and it's going to be the lambda expressions class is get class dot get simple name and string result is equal to s1.2 uppercase plus s2.2 uppercase and return result and I'll clear out this other code now and we'll just leave the print out there semicolon there to close off the line and we'll get rid of the uh, printing out of I there and just leave the return in there. Let's just clear off this code down here as well. Clean things up a little bit. And we may as well just clean this up. We put a probably just copied that code up above, but I've uh, typed it in now. All right, so let's just confirm that this works like it uh, was working before. String one and string two in the screen, you can see that it is working. All right, so I'll finish this video now. In the next video, let's actually uh, see how Lambda expressions are treated like nested blocks. So I'll see you in the next video.